So this is what it sounds like without the Rode Wireless. And this is what it sounds like with the Rode Wireless. Which one's better? Oh, my hat. We got another drone to test. Ugh. This company called Ruko sent us an email asking us if we would like to test out their new F11 GIM2 drone. It's not a new drone. This has actually been around for a while, but what they've done is, is they've upgraded the remote. The old controller was a Wi-Fi kind of controller. Well, this new controller is supposed to be a USB style controller, just like the DJI controllers. All right, let me get this thing out of the box here. I'm going to use my trusty Swiss Army knife for this one. Oh, there's no sticker there. There it is, guys. Well, that's just the box. All right, let me open this up and show you what it is. You might be blown away. Whoops. Check this out. There's the drone, there's the controller, and there's an extra battery, and there's all the accoutrements. In all honesty, guys, I did have to open this up earlier because I needed to get the numbers off the drone in order to register it because this is a heavy drone. This is not the DJI Mini 2. This isn't the Sub-250 drones. This is one of the heavier drones, so you have to have it reg registered even if you're not 107 certified. So that's the whole reason for this thing already being open, but I didn't peel all the stickers off. <laughs> Well, let's open up this drone here and show you what it is. This drone folds out just like any of the other drones, but this thing is big. This is the drone, and I'm telling you what, it feels impressive. It looks impressive. I've charged up the batteries, so we're all ready to go. This is one of the batteries. Look how big the battery is. Well, it comes with two of these. I haven't weighed it, but I think it weighs over 500 grams. It's almost twice as much as Jack and Rose now that they have those RID modules. <laughs> Let me get the controller out and show you what they've done. This controller is totally different than what they used to have. Uh, I guess I got it upside down. <laughs> anyway, they've got this little display thing down here. I need to peel that screen protector off. That's Go away. So this is the drone itself. It's got the, the sticks that are stored in the bottom just like DJI. It's got the part that comes up like this. Well, this is what I'm interested in looking at. This is the cable that goes into the phone just like the DJI drones. So that to me means that this is going to have a way better signal than the first generation drone, uh, GM, what is it, GIM2 drone that they come out with. One thing that it does not have is it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. So this isn't anything close to the obstacle avoidance drones that we're all used to flying now that the Mini 4 is out and also the Air 3. I wonder if this is comparable more so to the Air 3 than anything. Nice looking drone. I tried to wait till later in the day today to fly this drone because we had some pretty serious winds come in. Well, they've honestly just gotten stronger, but this is a level six wind resistance drone. So we're going to see if it can handle 30 something plus miles an hour gusts. I only want to test out a few things with this today. I want to test out the signal strength. I want to definitely do a return to home test and see how close to the home point it can get. One thing that this company thought ahead about was the remote ID. This does have remote ID built into it. It's got a module that's inside the drone itself. So you don't have to add anything to this drone to be legal with the FAA in the USA. I was looking at the reviews on this and the reviews do seem pretty positive. There are some negative reviews out there, but I think that they may have addressed all those and fixed it according to the reviews that are more current. One of the complaints though that was recent was the remote ID. They said that the remote ID doesn't work. So we're gonna test that out. I've got a phone with the uh, drone scanner app on it. I guess they have two different kinds of remote IDs. They've got the Wi-Fi version and they've got the Bluetooth. And this is supposed to be one of the Bluetooth versions. Well, iPhones, which is what we use to fly, when they have the drone scanner app installed, I guess that the iPhones can't use or can't receive the Wi-Fi transmissions. They can only receive the Bluetooth transmissions. So with this being a Bluetooth transmission type thing, I'm going to test it and see if the phone can, the drone scanner app can actually pick it up just to prove that it works. It's one thing to be out there flying these drones without any type of RID intentionally <laughs> but if you think that you have it because the company says that it's there and it's not working that's a totally different situation in my opinion however you'd be in the tr same trick bag as somebody who decided to just not put it on there i think this is going to be a fun drone to review anyway let me get all set up out there the next thing that you see is going to be this drone sitting on a landing pad what did you think i was going to lie to you <laughs> so i've decided to name this R ruko roku ruko drone <laughs> ricky ricky the ruko I think that's pretty fitting. What do y'all think? So what have I had to do to prepare to fly this drone? I've downloaded the Ruko app. I got the numbers off of the drone to register it with the FAA. I registered it with the FAA. It cost me $5 for three years. And that's pretty much it. Now all I got to do is I got to turn the drone on and then turn on the controller, start up the app, and it's going to walk us through the process. All right, I'm going to start the Roku app and I'm going to start the drone. 
And then I'm going to hit the turn the controller on here. And we're powered up and it's going to try to connect to the drone. And this could take up to 50 seconds, but you can see in the controller here, if the sun will let you, you can see that it's trying to connect. So I got to hit confirm on that up there. And if it doesn't connect, I guess we won't have a video. <laughs> 50 seconds is a very long time. <gasps> oh my goodness, I think we're connected, guys. So let me hit controls. And it's asking me to do the, the gimbal caliber or the uh, compass calibration. So it wants me to turn this around one meter off the ground. And I'll face it up into the sky, do the same thing. And now we're connected. Now, over here on the right hand side of the controller is the gimbal. So I'm going to try to move the gimbal up and down. Yep, it moves. So I've got control of this drone, it looks like. I'm going to go through some of the screen here. I'm going to hit the three dots at the upper right hand corner and it brings you through your parameters. So right now we're in beginner mode. So I'm going to take that off of there because we ain't no beginner no more. We're 107 certified. <laughs> Let me go over to the three dots again. And this is where you change from metric to imperial. And like I always say, I'm an imperial type of guy. So let's go back over to the parameters. We've got the flight height set at, I guess, a limit of 393 feet. I guess you can't go above 400 feet on this drone. Return to home altitude is pretty low. I want to set that, get that up to 100 and, let's go 100 and, 110 feet right here because we don't have any really high trees or anything around us right now. So let's go back to the, to the start screen here. So right now it says something about the SD card. I can't see it because it's so dark. Okay, no SD card detected. That's weird. I don't know why it's not reading the SD card. I'm going to go over here to the map. So I guess that red line on the map there, let me pull the map all the way up. That red line there is our perimeter that we can fly around. And I guess that that red arrow or whatever is showing wh which direction I'm pointing. So let's go back to the flight screen. I think we've done enough reviewing of the screen here. Let me pull these sticks together and see if this drone will lift off. Holy cow. Fly. Dude. That seems like a monster of a drone. He doesn't want to stay down. He's floating a little bit and he keeps raising up on me for some reason. I'm not sure why. Let me, let me fly him to the left and to the right here and see how, see how easy he is to control. All right, well his, might be the wind because we have a lot of wind going on right now. But the wind has blown him right towards me. Now let me see if I can twist him to the left and to the right. Now he's raising it back up into the air. He doesn't seem too steady. <laughs> doesn't seem to, oh, he's coming right at me. I'm gonna have him turn around and sit there and hover in front of the camera. Look at how he's leaning into the wind. All right, so it is windy. This is gonna be a pretty scary test here. So today I'm gonna keep him over the land, I think. Let me get him up in the air. We're gonna go probably, I don't know, 40 feet or so. Let me turn him to the right here so he can stay over land in case the, the worst happens. I'm gonna fly straight forward and we're gonna see what his, uh, he's loud. <laughs> I've never flown a drone that's so loud before. So we're gonna just see how far out he can go and keep his signal. But he's flying straight into the wind right now. So he is, uh, he's got a monster of a, of a task ahead of him. So far, the screen looks really good, and I, man, he he looks humongous in the sky. I've, like I said, never flown a drone this big before in my life, but that is impressive. He's looking he's looking really good and really sharp. He's already 500 feet out. The signal is still perfect. I don't think we have anything to worry about as far as signal goes. Wonder how far we can actually go with him. So we're almost 650 feet out, 700 feet out. Let me kind of turn him to the left here. He does look big out there. I think I could probably see him for at least 2,000 feet. Wow. So we'll just go out to 1,000 feet or we'll go to the, to the edge of the uh, pond here. And as long as our signal's still good, man, that is crazy. All right, let me get him turned around here and we'll get him to fly home. I'm gonna have him go right there like that. And he's moving just a little bit in the wind. That wind is strong. It's pushing him. <laughs> let me hit return to home here and see what he does. I'm going to slide return to return to home. home. And he is, he's raising up to his, to his uh, 160 feet, which could be bad. But it, I think the wind is going to probably push him a little bit faster than what he normally would go. But he's 110 feet, 115, 16 feet high. He's coming at us at 36 miles an hour. Let's see if he can hit that home point. I'm going to pull this gimbal down once he gets closer. 
All right, he's closer. <laughs> there we are. It just looked right past us. So he's at least returning home, which is cool. Let me pull the gimbal all the way down. I don't. There's no uh, crosshair option or anything like that for the for the uh, gimbal, so you can't really see what he's looking at. And I got the gimbal pulled all the way down, but it's not down to uh, 90 degrees, so the the view isn't. It's not as not as clear cut as the DJI drones. He's spinning, and now he's gonna try to drop and see. Let's see where he lands. Do I have him in, in view here? All right, so he is. Uh, he's a pretty good ways away from the home point. There he is. He's a pretty good it's ways handmade. away from the home point, but I don't think we could really ask for much more just because of the wind today. Is he really going to land? Come on, buddy. I know you can do it, Ricky. And he's landed in the grass and he's cut some grass. Stop returning. All right, and his motors have stopped. I didn't hear what she said. There's a loud truck that just drove by, <laughs> of course, just like always. Well, guys, I didn't hear what she said on the controller whenever he landed. Stop, return home. Maybe we'll be able to turn the volume up on that and, and hear what she had to say exactly. Stop, return home. But I think that return to home trip was pretty impressive, honestly, because of this wind. I and mean, we're talking about 30 mile an hour gust right now. I'd almost knocked my hat off. Oh, my hat. Ricky, so far you've impressed me. I just wish that we could get your SD card to work. I'm going to try to put the SD card back in and see what happens. Remember the old Atari games? You had to blow them. <laughs> Let me see if it'll pick it up now. Oh, there we go. It worked. The old Atari trick worked, guys. So unfortunately, I got to go get my other phone because we wanted to test out the remote ID, right? So I got to leave this drone sitting here while I go get the phone. I always forget something. I'll be right back. Don't let me forget to turn the screen recording back on. Stop, return home. We're going to test out the remote ID. I've got the drone still on. You guys can tell by the screen recording here that it's still on. And I'm going to go over to my other iPhone, or I'm going to hit Drone Scanner. I'm going to see what happens, what's displayed. So it's showing that there is one drone around. What does it say here? Okay, that is, that is the remote ID number for this drone right here. So it works. Very, very cool. So the remote ID does work. I can confirm that. It must be the Bluetooth-type transmission because the iPhone is picking it up. What well, we confirm that... <laughs> What other things should we test on this? All right, guys, well, I've got him out there quite a ways, 564 feet to be exact. I'm gonna fly over this water just because it wouldn't be a We're the Roberts test if we didn't. I know it's probably gonna look a lot better on the SD card than it looks on the screen, but so far right now, honestly, the screen looks really good. The gimbal looks like it's doing its job. All right, well, let's get him back home and we'll have a little recap in the truck. That wasn't bad, buddy, not bad at all. He's got some grass clippings on his backside. <laughs> well, we only used about half a battery's power today, so we didn't really get much flying time in. I promise you that this is not the last that you're gonna see of Ricky. We're gonna have him back on the channel soon, and we're gonna go out on a better day where there's not so much wind, and he can really show his stuff. <laughs> Ruko, I gotta thank you for reaching out, letting us try out this drone. I think that you've done something very positive with this controller, with this new system that you got working. I think it's working out really, really well. But guys, if you want to check Ruko out, there's a link in the description. Check them out, see if you're interested. They've got some really good sales going right now too on this drone, but they've got another drone that's listed that's sub 250. So that one you might really be interested in looking out as well. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. God bless.